Good morning. Who has gone out into the world? Today we're reading 2 John verse 7. For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess to Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Many deceivers have gone out, but out from where? Wherever they've gone out from, they are a problem, and they are considered by John to be a significant problem for this young church somewhere in Asia Minor that he's writing to. He's very concerned. In fact, this is the center of the epistle. This is the most important part of his message. This is why he wrote it. So now this could mean that they just are operating against the significance of Jesus. But I think it's more than that. I believe they are against the fact that Jesus came literally into human flesh, into the kind of flesh that you and I have. It seems they're denying somehow the literal humanity of Jesus, since this is a major point of emphasis in John's other writings. For example, in the Gospel of John over here, verses 1 to 3 and verse 14, strongly emphasizes that Jesus came and he took human flesh. He took our flesh. The first verses in the first epistle of John also emphasize that, that Jesus is real. We've handled him. We've, we've, we've touched him. We, they're emphasizing the reality, the, the fact that Jesus did come. He wasn't a kind of a floating ghost or something. Jesus came and he, he took our kind of humanity, and that's a big deal to John. And there's other places where we see this is a giant issue. Paul addresses it in Romans chapter 8, and in, in Philippians chapter 2, there's many places where this is addressed. Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 4. This is a significant item. Without this, the atonement is damaged, it's shrunken, and it just becomes some kind of a legal transaction out there somewhere. But no, there's more. There's more than just that. The important as that is. We need to always be careful when these topics come up. Much has been written in the history of Christianity. Whole tracts, whole long pieces of dogma have been written about how Jesus didn't take our kind of humanity. So we need to be real careful right here. We go always back to the Bible and see what the Bible itself is saying. And then we can look at what theologians and scholars say. But we start with the Word, and then we're very careful, because now we have something to work with. When we come to this verse, we've come to the one and only use of the word Antichrist in this epistle. Antichrist is a big deal. Now, Antichrist can have two meanings, literally in the original language. Antichrist can mean in opposition to Christ, or it can mean in the place of Christ. Now, we all know that Satan's opposed to Jesus. That's, that's not a big surprise. Everybody knows right and wrong, good and evil are opposed to each other. But to have a Jesus or something in the place of Jesus or a modified, denatured Jesus in the place of the true Bible Jesus, that's more subtle. And that's what I really think we're dealing with here. We're dealing with John is warning against a, a subtle view, set of views that diminishes the true humanity of Jesus, that he came in the flesh. We see that in 1 John 2, verse 18. There are many antichrists in the world, not just one, not one mega antichrist. There's just many. Anybody that's teaching in a way that diminishes the realness of Jesus' sacrifice for us, the, the trueness of that he came in our humanity, that's, that is an antichrist kind of a teaching. Now, John is warning us also in this verse that deception and antichrist always go together. They always are found together. They're the same thing. Any person who's an antichrist is also a deceiver. So we should look, I believe, for subtle, a little bit more subtle, at least not open, direct forms. Uh, Satan is, is much too clever to approach us directly. He does not come in a devil suit and uh, just expose himself. He always comes masked as an angel of light. Even Paul talks about the 2 Corinthians 11, verse 14. He is transformed or disguised as an angel of light, Satan. So we look for that. John and Paul are in quite in agreement. So there's a great danger here. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we want to be alert and careful. We want to be going by the Bible. We want to be true. And there are so many ways that the devil tries to to spin our understanding and reduce Jesus and shrink Jesus down and make Jesus less than what the Bible, what the New Testament says he is. So Lord, help us to be careful on this point, especially in the Bible. Help us to follow the counsel of John here in this epistle to beware of deceivers and antichrists. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So deceivers and antichrists have gone out into the world. Jesus is our substitute, but he is also our example. Don't let them take away the example of Jesus. God be with you today.